It's like society tells us to be a certain way, to act a certain way. And no, that's just a created illusion. It's an illusion. Welcome to the Spirits Beside Us podcast. I'm your host, Chris Lippincott. I'm an ex-Wall Street analyst turned international medium, spiritual teacher, and best-selling author. Each week, we'll dive into the fascinating and uplifting arena of the non-physical world to help you deepen your understanding and spiritual connection to the unseen realm. We'll also share a behind-the-scenes look with others who've done the same and speak with experts in the field about their experiences. Pull up a seat and let's dive into these perspective-changing conversations. Welcome again to another episode of Spirits Beside Us. I'm so happy to have you back, my friend. And today we've got a really exciting episode because we've got a guest, uh, Brigitte Visa, who is a soul empowerment coach. She's a divine channel and she's a light language healer. And we're going to hear some light language today. So stay tuned for that. She delivers messages from many light beings uh, in an effort to aid humanity and aid everybody who is in contact with her. And it's really sort of in hopes that people are going to awaken not only to what life is all about, but also what is beyond our physical senses. So I can't wait to dive into this. So uh, B, thank you so much for uh, coming on. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for having me today. Oh, this is great. I, I, I can't wait to, uh, to dive in and, and ask you all these questions. But the, the first thing I want to know, I mean, this sounds like so interesting. How did you begin communicating uh, in light language? How did you learn it? How do you connect with light beings and, and the archangels and all the ascended master? How did that really start? How, where, where did this begin? It's not a, it's not a usual track. <laughs> you know, I think my, my dad was very spiritual. Um, he was uh, a Rosicrucian. And so part of the AMRC and that dated back to the ancient mystery schools in Egypt. I didn't even know that until I started writing my first book, which was a very, very personal book. And I was like, oh, my gosh, but I'm already channeling Saint Germain. And, you know, he's the main person, uh, main uh, ascended master that I normally channel uh, an archangel Michael. And uh, so I was dumbfounded uh, at the time. But, you know, I mean. Everyone, I mean, many people that recover their abilities, I'm not going to say it's uncover, it's really recovering because we're recovering the light within ourselves, yeah, because we're very, very much conditioned. And it's trauma. We go through very traumatic experiences. And, I mean, I've had my fair share, yeah. Many people have had their fair share. And either you remain sitting in that quicksand, drowning, or... You get up and take responsibility for your own life. Yes, as a child, it's different. But ultimately, as an adult, take that responsibility. Take that accountability for your life. Yeah. And the pain that you're feeling is not meant to taunt you. It's meant to elevate you. And it's meant to make you understand that you can overcome to become. So overcoming your experiences and becoming lighter within yourself. And when you do that, when you alchemize these experiences, life becomes more beautiful. And even though you still get, you know, these gnarly experiences thrown to you like a bowling ball, it's like, hey, you know what? I got this. I understand the experience. And I understand the lesson that's held within the experience. And that's what's important. So, yeah, for me, it's been like, you know, uh, one step forward, two steps back. It's been really like that a lot of the time. And I call it, you know, donkey syndrome because I really had to learn. And it took me many, many years. But would I have my life any other way? No. And the characters in my life, um, I'm not mad at them. I've forgiven them. I've forgiven myself because, Chris, we're all beautiful reflections of one another. That's what I always say. We're teachers of one another. And why would I carry all that bitterness and that pain, you know, on my shoulders? Why would I carry that with me? Why would I dim my light? We're here to undim our light and, you know, sparkle 
sparkle and return to that love for ourselves, but also inspire and empower others. Right. So how did you start communicating with, uh, you know, light beings or, you know, what have you? you know, was yes. this something that uh, started as a child or you had did. an experience, spiritual awakening or what? Yeah. I mean, I had it as a child, um, but you know, life takes over and you kind of forget. And then I went through a series of experiences and it was pretty much in, because I also became a Reiki master and I taught Reiki, I tuned people, but it wasn't, I, I mean, I studied many healing modalities, but it wasn't until 2016 when I went to a workshop from my mentor, Alania Starhawk in Florida. And uh, she's an Akashi record healer. So she goes into past lives and I went to her for healing sessions and she had this workshop on how to become like a divine channel. I thought, great. My God, the, car, the class was full. And I was just sitting in a corner, propped in a corner outside of the circle because I'm a little bit antisocial. And so I <laughs> sat there and she had, uh, she was using her uh, singing bowls and it's a light language and a meditation. And she counted to three. And I have no idea where I went. And then I heard a count back from three, two, one, and I was back in the room. But everyone had saw, had seen all these, uh, the guides of the ascended masters, the archangels got messages. Well, I got Jack Dilly squat. So I'm sitting there and I was really upset, really upset. And I was wiping the tears away. Um, but then she, she advised us how she started out and she had a, um, she just took a notepad and a pen and she said to the universe, I'm open and ready to receive. And that's what stayed with me. And because I'd already been through a lot of trauma with an ex of mine in Florida, who's doing very well now, um, and I, my mind was kind of shot anyway. So I went back home and I did exactly what she did. And it was really beautiful because when I look back on it, and I still have these journals, it was really old English prose. And I was really crying tears of joy. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And so I started asking questions and, and I would get the responses. And then I started using my cards because I couldn't discern who I was talking to. And then I got my cards out, whether it was the archangels, the ascended masters, the deities, and I would pick a card. And then I would ask, well, do you have a, you know, do you have a message to convey uh, to me? So rather than looking it up on Google, I sat there and, you know, I just wrote it down and it was really cool to do it that way. And we just need to practice whatever we do, whether it's going to the gym or we want to see results. Yeah, it takes time. Um, right. Riding a bike, you've got to learn it. Mm. Driving a car, same thing. Um, so it was very really, maybe a little wobbly at first. Yes, <laughs> but you'll get you. <laughs> you got to learn the mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's how I started that's how I learned it. And eventually I could discern them because people would like to always like to know, well, who are you channeling? Um, mm. And to me, you know, we're all light, we're all one, but they all have different personalities though. Um, and right. everyone channels them very differently. I channel them in a very comical way. They will come with songs. They will come with Marvel characters. They it's like hilarious. I mean, the message is serious, but the language, the lingo they use is quite, is quite. Yeah, well, one thing I, one thing I've always known is that uh, not only is uh, spirit incredibly intelligent, but they've yeah. got an incredible sense of humor. They do. They're so funny. It's the, it, because it's, they're just pure joy and that's what's coming through. Yes. And they've got a great sense of humor. Every single time I connect with them, it's just like, oh my gosh, I want to hang out and have a beer with you. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny because that's exactly what I always say about Archangel Michael. Trust me, I don't drink, but I always call him a Jack the Lad, somebody you could have, you know, you could sit down and have a beer with. Exactly. It's just like, oh my God. In fact, there have been times where uh, people who have uh, come through and I've done a reading for people, they'll come through as themselves. And the first things they do, there was one person who came through and uh, the first thing he's identifying himself is, you know, he's like, hey, want to have a beer? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that was his personality. So the two of us are talking about hanging out, having a having a beer, and sure enough, this is exactly what the sitter understood. But that's what they're all coming through with smiles and beers. And I'm just okay. 
okay. That's where I went. <laughs> yeah. So you also uh, connect with ascended masters and some of the archangels as well. Mm-hmm. So it's just it, it's beyond just you know, spirit, beyond just uh, you know the you know light uh, workers and what have you. So how d- did you also begin to connect with the archangels and the ascended masters? Was that just more practice and, and more practice? And you started and the galactics, yes, they came out. And the galactics, yeah. So you uh, you were also uh, working with that. So it was just more what time and you started to discern them. I, my question, and it's always been this question is how can you discern between the archangels or galactics versus perhaps a guide? Because for example, I'll be in, I'll, I'll, you know, do a trance session and sometimes, you know, you can feel the guide. Sometimes you can feel this incredibly angelic guide, so you're, I find it sometimes difficult between knowing it's an angelic, loving, high vibration God versus an angel. So how do you discern that the difference? It's a feeling. It's uh, it, sometimes I'll see I'll I'll see them. Sometimes I'll just see light. Um, but I it's it, it's a it's a difficult question. It's just a feeling. It's just a knowing. It's like, hello, I'm here. Uh, It's kind of like that. Um, Or they'll just show themselves and then I'll know. But often enough, it's also just a feeling. It's just a knowing. Yeah, because I I mean, maybe it's my, uh, you know, remaining material logical mind that keeps on, you know, bumping in, which... I've never fully released, um, but there'll be, there'll be times where I'll be like, that really feels like an angel, but, but, uh, I can't, I, uh, it's just me. I, I, so I, I, I dismiss it out of, you know, thought thinking that's too good to be true. Well, that's funny. But I also ask them if I'm not sure, who are you? Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'll get a response. Well, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, or th- there, there, there are there are times I've I've asked uh, you know my guides and other people, and I'll, I'll when I when I was first starting out, I got like a frank, I was like, but because that was all I can handle <laughs> <laughs> at the time. So they gave me what I could work with at the time. Yep. Over you know over the years, it 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 finally changed, but uh, I, I don't think I've ever um, asked the angelic individual who they were. Although I have had people who. Uh, communicate with angels and they're like, Oh yeah, you're, you're speaking to so-and-so. I'm like, really? <laughs> Again, it's that materialistic skeptic who, who never really went away. He's always a doubting Thomas is always in the background going. Nye, nye, nye. So I guess I got to release that. Don't I? <laughs> yes. But it's like what, what I was telling you, like last week I did a sacred shamanic, uh, well, a shamanic journey. And uh, I, I never worked with deliverance before. And when I did the light language, oh, I clearly saw them. Hmm. I clearly saw them. It was like I was just gone. I was standing there on top of the mountain at sunset. Uh, and it was really strange because it was just like I was there, but I was not there. And so hmm. once I'd finished the light language, it was like I, I came back. Yeah, and so I, I've I've heard light language a, a couple of times, whether I've been you know in a in a singing bowl class or whatnot, yeah. but I've never really understood what light language is. So perhaps you can start out just by dis- saying or describing what is light language. It's funny in my it's it's frequency, but it's funny because I I wrote this in my book and it just reminding me of it in my upcoming book on uh, about India. It's like a scrum, scrumptious omelette. You're not going to understand it. It's like <laughs> it, it's like scrambled, scrambled language, okay. but it's frequency and it's love, it's energy. And just because your mind doesn't understand it, yeah, your logic, your soul just understands these light coaches just beautifully and it just dances and it integrates and i think that's what's important because we are energy we are frequency yeah and so Mm -hmm. when we suffer from any dis-ease within ourselves that is because we all our experience unhealed experiences we chuck in the archives of our minds 
And so when it, something remains unhealed, we can easily get triggered. And so we suffer from dis-ease. It's going to come out somewhere. And so this is frequency. And as, as my guides always say, it's like fine tune. It's, it's fine tuning. It's like tuning into the right radio station. And it's aligning ourselves back to the grid of our, uh, you know, of our body. It's aligning our soul within our body. And starting to live a fulfilled life. Okay. Yeah. So, so it really does feel like it's uh, much more of a frequency. It's like trying to describe color or trying to describe, you know, vibration. You could, yeah. you could try to get it into a scientific package, but it, you know, it, it's, it's far beyond that. It's far beyond what uh, we would think of as sort of a material, which perhaps is why sometimes it's uh, often so incomprehensible when we hear it. Yep. Yeah. But the same, you know, when you listen to singing bowls, you feel that vibration. You feel right. that frequency. You feel it. You really do. Yeah, yeah. Angelic tuning yeah. forks, the same thing. That's how yeah. powerful it is. When we understand that we are energy and that everything is energy, that's a shift in perspective. Not everything mm -hmm. is solid. We see things as solid. I see things as sacred geometry. We're all sacred geometry. We're all mathematical equations. We just need to, you know, redefine the formulas a little bit. Right. Exactly. So true. It's just uh, finding the right vibration, understanding that we are vibration. You know, even you know, quantum physics has shown that yes. everything is energy regardless. Of, and I love that aspect of it. Do you think you'd be able to give us an example of yes. what light language is and, and what it sounds like uh, for people who perhaps have not even you know heard light language? Absolutely. So as I always say, we don't need an intent, but if you would like to have an intent, we can work with that and put it okay. in a little bowl. All right. Let's put this, put each individual intent into the bowl. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's, uh, let's, and let's also uh, shut off our, our, our ringers, shut off our phones, yes. make sure we're not getting disturbed because we wouldn't want that now, would we? <laughs> And I like that one. So for each, <clears throat> for each and every one that is listening, just put your intent in the bowl. Yeah, in a little bowl. And I'll just do a small, a, a little exercise before I start. Um, okay. But also remember, even though you don't understand it, just allow for the, the codes to be absorbed within your whole being. Allow it to wash over you like a beautiful golden shower. Don't mm -hmm. think about it, just feel it and absorb it. Feel it. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing. So okay. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. All right, let's close our eyes. Take a very deep breath in. Hold it. And gently let that go. And just take another very deep breath in. Hold it. And again, gently, gently let that go. And just keep breathing in and out whilst I bring through the light codes. Mokia no kuko se mani akia muwe kalalu ni to shitata to me lala ni kiti mu lala li siki ya muheta wo enu se ma wekiata lala li kiniki ya sukuai o kukuai talu petatu tutu nisia tawe hete moku sa siki ya mu nisi wa he ta tu isi ya ma ani niki wa ui masi ki ya ma u and they're saying to all of you, learn to dance with yourselves. Muki asi yamala we hiti ti yamaku ushiti. Taku tamu tasiki ya tototai tatatai mo niki ya wo e o anushi pi. Nushi si si ya muku i niki ya wa a. Tawe i tawe i u u u. Stand at your own feet. Tsiyama u u u ta i i i sikiyama. Everything is up and flow. Nothing ever remains the same. Nothing remains stagnant. 
and neither do you. Ta we e e a, ta we e e a. So implement the changes, the changes, and go with the flow, the flow of life and the flow of the universe, because you are the universe as much as the universe is you. You are, hmm. Hmm, you are a symphony. You are a dance. Moheta, moheta, kasu, kasu mi inikiawa. Thank you. And whenever you're ready, you. just open your eyes. Mm. Beautiful. I could really feel that. That was, uh, I could feel the vibration. As soon as you started talking, I was like, that's amazing. I could really feel it. That was great. Well, <clears throat> that, and, and, and it was so interesting because I, I, somehow I could feel like they were, you know, talking to me, I could feel the vibration. I could understand, comprehend. You know, the, the them reaching out. Yep. It it almost sounded Hawaiian. Yeah, this is kind of new to me. This the the, the uh, you know, like I said to you, ever since the, since blah, I'm a little high. Sorry, <laughs> this is <the> <laughs> it'll do that to you. Yes, and it's free too. Yeah, it's free and it's too. legal. <laughs> so I, you know, as I, as I said, I always like to progress and develop in life. So with a sacred ceremony, it's like it, it's changed, and I love the fact that the light language changes um, and mm. that it doesn't remain the same. Interesting. Interesting. So what, what's interesting is that this really seems like it's, it's also quite a, a, a healing uh, modality, very you know, healing for, for people and not, not just messages, but just a sort of a healing uh, aspect to it as well. Yeah. Um, and you were mentioning that uh, you, know, you had had uh, you know, traumatic experiences in, in your life and you know, you've gone through so many things. So how would you feel that, you know, your traumatic experiences and your life experiences uh, have um, helped you evolve, change, improve? And what kind of practical advice do you think you have for people so they can reconnect to themselves or, you know, also recover from whatever experiences they might yeah. have had? And, and let me tell you something. It's not easy when you're going through challenging experiences, but listen to your own heart. Listen to yourself and do mm. what resonates with your own spirit. People can tell you their opinions and people can be judgy and, you know, we retreat or we don't know what to do with ourselves. But it's really take, looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, you know what, I got this. Take that accountability, that responsibility, and you can change your life. It's about, I know in quantum physics, it's change your thinking, change your life. Yeah, well, actually, that is very, very true. But it's releasing the hurt. It's releasing the pain. It's releasing the conditioning and knowing and under understanding that there is no shame in reaching out for help. Yeah, whether you talk to somebody, whether that's family, friends, or it's a counselor or a, a holistic healer, do whatever feels right for you. But don't stay there. Don't sit there on the couch and expect for a fairy godmother to come your way and wave a magic wand. What do you think the archangels do? Or the ascended masters? Let me tell you a little story about Archangel Michael. He's all about courage and facing your fears. Do you really think he's going to pull you out of the experience and say, oh, my child, no, no, it's okay. You don't need to go through that experience. Oh, heck no. Do you know what he does? He shoves you into your fears. He does that. You want his help? Hmm. That's exactly what he does. How and else do you learn? Yeah, that's how you learn. That's how you alchemize your experiences. Nothing is given to you on a silver platter. Absolutely not. No. Um, no. And so it's becoming conscious. It's becoming aware of the signs. Even when you ask the universe for help or your guides, I often call in the unemployed angels, uh, very powerful, very powerful, because he just write it down. It's a really good little exercise for people that are listening. Um, it's like wh whatever you're going through, um, whether it's health, whether it's something legal, whether it's, it could be anything. I wrote down a list of 30 things 
And some of these things I have already been able to cross out. And it's also sending healing to family members, whatever you want. But Hmm. all you need to do is just sit down with a notepad and a pen and just say, I ask the unemployed angels of the highest vibrational of the highest vibrational frequency and pure unconditional love and compassion to assist me with whatever it is. And then you repeat mm. that and you repeat that. And as you do that, it's like this intent. And just because something doesn't happen straight away, do not try to control the outcome. Mm. Yeah, you can take steps. That's the same with manifestation. Yeah, we we try and control an outcome or we say, I want to be successful in, I want to buy a house. No, envision that you already have it and mm. then take the steps towards it. But what we try and do is we try and control things. And sometimes we have to be in the flow. That's why the universe is our dance partner. But often we keep kicking the shins of the universe and it's like ouch We're what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> and you know everything goes awry but these are just a couple of exercises and they they work beautifully hmm. yeah it sounds it sounds perfect and one of the things you were talking about before about uh you know you have to have both the uh, the the vision the the, the plan the, the future the manifestation but you also have to have the healing the analogy i always use is it's great to have a house, but you got to have the foundation first. So you've got to clear yeah. out what was in that foundation. You got to clear out the garbage, clear out the stuff mm-hmm. that, you know, may have, uh, you know, given you the uh, dark night of the soul, may have given you, you know, the, the, the shadow work that you need to do, get rid of all that stuff, clear yeah. it out, clear the land. Then you can start with a firm foundation that's now clear and then you can build your magic house on top of that foundation once you have it that's the analogy i always use for people i love it so yeah it's a it, it also helps me <laughs> so i look i'm like okay how can i put this into my mind <laughs> yeah you know sometimes sometimes i'm six knives short of a dozen <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's another another little remedy that uh, I I used because I went through something traumatic several months ago uh, in June and um, traumatic relationship that lasted less than three weeks because um, I, you know, boundaries are boundaries and uh, I'm not a doormat anymore. And my home was, it was so thick with negative energy, I could hardly breathe. And I said to my guides, and this is for anyone that wants to release any toxins or negativity in the home. And I said, but I, I do have sage, but I don't want to burn it in my home. So have you got anything else? And I'm walking my dog. It's really like five, five in the morning. And they're like, yeah, Brigitte, distilled vinegar, salt, just your kitchen salt. That's fine. And sage essential oil drops. And I was like, I don't have those. And I opened my little box that was the first thing I picked out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I had sage, but of I course, do have it. It. <laughs> and then, yeah, and either you can create it as a spray with distilled uh, water. But what I did uh, to clean my whole home and everything was, um, I, you know, I poured hot water into it and I cleaned everything. I had a cloth, clean cloth, and I cleaned my whole house. And it wow. smelled really nice, but it felt so much lighter afterwards. Hmm. Interesting. So you, you, not only do you get a clean house, but you get a really clean house. A really clean house. And it really <laughs> smells nice as well. I was really surprised. Wow. That's amazing. That's, that's a great combination. All right. Well, note to self, I'm going to have to remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> These are just like simple little remedies, you know? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. That's that's fabulous. You were mentioning, uh, you know, you going through Akashic records before, yes. or, you know, past lives. So can you talk about, uh, you know, past lives, perhaps some of your past lives or learning about past lives and how has that helped you, you know, today as you are moving through uh, your own life and maybe how learning about past lives can help other people heal? Yeah, it's really beautiful. Uh, okay, not everybody believes in reincarnation, but trust me, you've been here heaven knows how many times and you will come back heaven knows how many times to help mother Gaia and to help grow and (laughs) 
and um, to help grow and evolve your soul as well. But uh, it's really powerful, especially when you go through past lives. And I'll give an example with my ex in Florida who, bless his heart, he lost his mom. He had a reckless, but he's doing really well now. Uh, and that's just really beautiful to see. And he was so... He, he clung to me like a little pug that wouldn't let go for, wouldn't let go of my leg. And I, you know, I paid his bills and I tried to help him out, but you know, I was working seven days a week and I understood when I went to see Alania and walked through that past life and that was cleared. It was sometime in the middle ages. And I, I did something, I, I think it had to do with herbs, but I was well off. And he was a charlatan and he poisoned me and under the guise of he was healing me. And it was like an arsenic and um, I, I, I died of it, not instantaneously. It took quite a few uh, few weeks or several months. And um, yes, and so he took everything from me. And it was, it was really interesting what happened. Um, and that was that once that was cleared, the energy changed and he, he, you know, he left me be and started to work on his own life uh, mm. and sorted it out. And I made, you know, plans to, to, to leave the country anyway, the U S but it was really beautiful. And there's so much in there and also going through other past lives, because what people don't often realize is that we sometimes, sometimes there are still attachments or karmic attachments and they may come up years later and you just walk through these past lives and I can just step into mine or I'll see mine come through. And I mean, I've lived countless lives and it's fascinating, but it's very healing at the same time because you let go of the attachments, you let go of that karmic residue. And I mean, there's a difference between doing regression therapy and Akashic record healing. Regression therapy, I, I mean, it was tough for me, really tough for me because you go very deep. But with Akashic mm. record healing, you just sit opposite the healer and you still feel everything that you're going through, but it's different. Mm, interesting. So are, are, do, you, do, you, do you feel that when you're doing the Akashic Record healing that you're um, becoming more uh, immersed in learning uh, because you can recall it perhaps better than you would if you were undergoing hypnotherapy or regression therapy, which is a little bit more unconscious? Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, you're still there, but you're mm -hmm. far away. I mean, I, I when I did regression therapy, I was in the Byzantium Empire, uh, you know, and I was a man. And I have married, not happily married, but I had a daughter. And I was a philosopher, I was a writer, and my views were not met with, um, how would I put it? Uh, uh, Approval? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> People didn't like my views. Uh, actually, I ended okay. up in prison because of a blood brother that was my ex in in this lifetime that i kicked out of my house back in june and i landed in prison because of him and i died in prison during that time because of him i was stabbed uh mm. very very interesting that was very very visual um and i could describe my house as well i've lived in the times of julius caesar i was a politician um didn't really agree with his views all the time I've lived in the Atlantean Empire. Um, I've lived galactic lives. Gosh, I've been enslaved. I was a. Um, I was part of the Inquisition in Peru. I wasn't very nice. Oh my gosh! I still, <laughs> you know, still just chopping people's hands off and waterboarding them, hanging them upside down yeah. in trees. It was just terrible what I did. Um, yeah. Um, I've been saying you're nicer now. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I wouldn't want to cross you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I was sacrificed e eons ago um, into a lava pit. Uh, and Ooh. that was, I mean, even before, and this wasn't so long ago. This is a couple of weeks ago. And I was right bang in the middle of it. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this? And, uh, <laughs> 
I mean, even before the laugh hit me, it was like, I mean, it just, I, I can't even, it was just excruciating. So, so how did you uh, come to understand these different lives? Was it, was it just going back and uh, having this person read you what the Akashic records were or how, how did you learn? So some of them were through the Akashic records, but like from the Inquisition, uh, the lava, recently I saw myself as a, um, as a Mayan and there were, there was a war. I mean, the water was so clear. It's like, I just, they lived so differently. Um, but I was shot with an arrow cause there were, there was a war going on. And, um, but yeah, sometimes I can just sit in the energy and it will just pop up and there's a reason for it to pop up. And mm. so I just close my eyes and I just go with it. And often I will just write it down. Wow. Okay. So you're able to sort of uh, recall it yes. uh, spontaneously yes. just by yeah. sitting with it. Oh, that's interesting. It's fascinating. And, it's and yeah. it's really and, and so that's that's helped you heal just by seeing the connections to people that are in your current life or yeah. some experiences that are in your current life, and you're saying, I have a better understanding of that, and now I'm releasing that. Or yes, how does that work? Absolutely. Yeah, you are releasing that. Uh, and it's really funny because sometimes in this lifetime, people are still the same and they haven't evolved and they go through the same experiences time and time again. And then they have to go through it in the next life. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a tortoise or a turtle. It really doesn't matter. Um, and if you don't learn it in this lifetime, maybe you'll learn it in the next lifetime. And that's okay too. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the... The purpose of life is not only to learn lessons, but to learn how to grow ourselves based on the experiences we've had yes. in prior attempts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what's, what's life all about? You remember the movie Alfie, right? And Michael Caine goes, but what's life all about? Well, um, he talks about peace, you know, and having a, a dime in his pocket. But um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's really all about returning to that love for ourselves and each other. As Archangel Michael always says, it's walking one another home back to the light of ourselves and each other. It's all about inspiring one another. And what mm. do we do? We're so stuck in our ego. It's like me, 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 rather than, right. you know, it's, it's, it's about the we. It's how, how do we co-create not just for ourselves, but with each other. Hmm. So that that raises the, the the question that yes, we all need to um, try to grow into an awareness of we co-create mm -hmm. and become less. Yeah, you know, I don't want to call it selfish, but self, but self protective, perhaps. Yep. Um, but we're born uh, with a, an inborn defense mechanism, yes. the ego, at, by the age of three, where we're trying to mentally protect ourselves from, quote unquote, those people out there that are doing things to me that I don't like. So we create this ego, we yep. create this false persona of me versus them, I'm separate from them, and as a result, ever since the age of three, we always think we're separate from everything, even source spirit and everything we're even aware of. So how do we go beyond what we've learned, what's become a learned habit of focusing on the ego and our ego mindset perspective, perhaps, and go beyond that? <laughs> you know, it's really a really funny vision. It's like we've all unplugged, right? We've all unplugged from source and we walk around with these little plugs, just plugless. And it's and the ego, I mean, it means ejecting God out. That's what we've done. We've ejected source out. Oh, I love out. that. That ejecting God out. Ah, that's, yes. That's a great but, Because we are God creators. We That's what we are. We are manifestors. We are an extension of God source energy. We are all embers of the same spark. And so, yes, our ego is just, ego is just a persona, a created persona, um, a character uh, that we identify with. And I always say it like this. It's like, you know, the ego is cruising in the car and the mind is mm, just discussing with the ego and drinking, uh, you know, cocktails from the Mockingbird Tavern and just slurping it all up, whatever the ego says. And the soul, well, the soul's in the trunk of the car. It's going, help, let me out, let me out, let me out. 
And eventually <laughs> the mind sobers up and it's like hearing that in the trunk. I was like, oh, wait, excuse me, ego. Can you please stop the car? Stop the car. Right. And the mind goes to the trunk and lets the soul out and the soul can breathe. And the soul kicks the ego out the, out the front seat of the car. And it's like, excuse me, but I'm driving. Yeah, that's you. Like, hey, you know what? I'm taking back control of my life. So I'm sitting in the driver's seat and driving. And the ego is sitting tied up in the back seat. And the mind is sober sitting in the front seat. And it's saying, yeah, you know what? We got to talk this out. And that's all about healing. Because, you know, our ego has created a persona due to our unhealed experiences. Everything that we go through. And it's like, you know, those little demons, those little gremlins, they're not bad. They just want to be heard. So it's like the ego just wants to be heard. Hey, you know what? But I've done this because of this. So talk it out. Mm -hmm. Right. And and uh, to, your, to your point, it's like our ego grows or evolves based on the experiences a person has in life. So it grows almost like a callus uh, on the skin. So, okay, well, I'm bruised here. Now I'm going to become more sensitive about this experience and I'm going to become more protective of that and I'm going to avoid that or I'm become more separated from that. Yep. You know, perhaps the ego becomes more sensitive to people of who, who have purple hair or something. I don't know. <laughs> pick, pick, pick your poison, right? Um, yes. <laughs> but all of a sudden you become much more focused and sensitive on that thing that you've had the experience with. And all of a sudden that's where you are that much. There's more of a buffer that you have to sort of, I guess, if you want to <laughs> go back to the concept of the gals, file it back down somehow. Yeah, absolutely. And so not only that, it's like, Society tells us to be a certain way, to act a certain mm. way. And no, that's just a created illusion. It's an illusion. You know, you have to be happy with who you are. It's not about competing in this world. And that's, that's mm. even companies compete with one another. And it's just like, you know, work with one another. You will achieve so much more. Um, and that's, you know, again, that's that separation and, and the ego. And it's like, wow, if you were to fly high, you know, above the clouds and you look down on earth, it's so tiny. You're just a grain of sand. And it's like everything you make such a drama out of, it's like it's so minute. Yeah. It, it, as the saying goes, uh, two minds are better than one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's far easier to have something accomplished when you have two involved than one usually. Mm. <laughs> so that kind of raises the question, you know, we were talking about healing and and, and healing experiences or healing um, you know, traumas that we've had, whether mm. it's, you know, the, the ego protecting us or not. How do we begin that journey of healing? What What is it that we're, you know, that we need to do to really get that healing you know, completed. Oh, it's never complete. What do you think? I'm well, still a work in progress. Wrong word. <laughs> wrong word. How do, how, how do we get, begin that journey? Uh, as, as the saying goes, um, you know, we need, what's the, um, how do you begin the uh, journey of a thousand miles? Take the first step. So how do you take that first step? How do you begin it? <laughs> well, exactly. As you said, you take that first step. Well, it's either you remain as you are, you're happy with your life and you keep, you know, and and you and and the big bad wolf will keep blowing your house down, or you change your perspective and you change your stance and you say, you know what, it's time for me to heal up. I want a better life for myself. I do not want to be roaming around in this in this muck. Yeah, politely mm -hmm. put, um, it's entirely up to you. And like I said, there, there, there's no right or wrong. If you choose to stay where you are, then that's okay too. If it takes you years to get to that point and say, finally, you know what? I've had enough and I really need to heal now. I want to change my life. Um, then that's okay too. I cannot tell you what to, I, can, I can't tell people what to do. Yes. For me, it was, I took responsibility for my life because I wanted that change. 
And Mm -hmm. the more you go through the experiences and the more you heal, it's like the next time something comes your way, it's like, hey, you know what? I got this. It's like, you know, when you're playing Donkey Kong or Mario Brothers or whatever, and you level and you go through these levels and every time you die and then you've got to play the, play the baddies again until you reach the next level. And then you kind of get the hang of it. Um, and you'll meet more baddies in your experiences or on the way, new baddies, so to speak. But every time, if you keep going, yeah, you overcome it. So hmm. when you're playing a computer game, yeah, it's the same in, in life, really. You can overcome anything. It's just a mindset. Yes. It's just a mindset. There you go. Both, both on a computer game and in life. And it's easy to give up on a computer game just as much. Yeah. But you, <laughs> you know the saying. Get frustrated. Yeah. But, but you know the saying, right? What you think you create and then it manifests. It, it, exactly. It, that's, that's how powerful the mind is. Exactly. Although a lot of people uh, feel that that's not real, they feel that it's it, it, it's it's all in the situation. They feel it, it's 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 their energy. You can feel as this. Oh, I can't do that. Or, you know, I think I can. And the saying, "You can if you think you can." Yep. So yeah, that's that's the whole. That's the big thing. So, uh, touching on that, how do we you know ultimately uh, tap into that? highest potential how do we get to that point where we can create our highest self our highest potential our 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 goals our aspirations you know how do we um, really get there while we are just talking about we can manifest but what are some of the practical steps that we can take i'm not there yet either (laughs) everything goes in stages everything goes in stages um and uh, like I said, when we talk about manifestation, it's really about just envisioning that you already have it, whatever it is, and taking the steps towards it. But there are many people in this life that procrastinate or they're stuck behind their computer, their phones, you name it. Um, it's not like it was in the 1980s. Life was very, very different. Yeah, mm-hmm. and people get sidetracked all the time these days. But um It's like, what, what's, you you know, what's important to you? That would be my question. What's important to you? What do you want to do with your life? Interesting. Interesting. Put what it is that's uh, important to you, your goals first and keep on thinking of those goals. Keep on focusing and placing your energy on those goals. The more energy you place on the goals, the greater they're going to be coming towards you. The second you focus on energy, that's something you don't want. Well, you'll get that thing that you don't want wherever you place your energy. And, you know, it doesn't matter if people believe in you or not. What matters is that you believe in yourself. Mm. That's the most important thing because people can put others down. Yeah. Um, Yeah, You have to have that, uh, the the, the self-belief and and the self-love. If if there's no self-love, self-belief, self-understanding, then that's going to be, you know, uh, an issue. So I think that's, again, you're going to put the energy into yourself. Everybody says, well, that's being selfish. No, you it's know, selfless. It's self-preservation. Yes, self-love. self-preservation. Yes. That's why self-love is such a necessity. It really, really is. Um, and I used to hate myself many years ago. My dad always used to say, and you know, he crossed over in 1988 and I was 14. And he always used to say, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I love you. Uh, what the heck, man? But, uh, you know, I didn't understand it as a child, but I do understand it now because it's the hardest thing to say to ourselves. Mm, but absolutely. our soul, you know, our soul is just beautifully intact. That light is beautifully intact. It's just that we've layered ourselves with the conditioning um, because of what we feed our minds. Yeah, one of the one of the greatest experiences and greatest practices I learned – and it was so, it felt so awkward in the beginning was to stand in the mirror and out loud verbally say, at first, I like myself because I couldn't believe it. And I did that and I, and I, I just felt so, I was like, oh, this feels wrong. I, I, it was so awkward. But I just kept, I, I forced myself to look at myself in the mirror and say, I like myself a hundred times. And by 
the 50th or 60th times this, this smile started to cross my face. <laughs> and then by the time I'm at the 80, 90 ish, I'm just like grinning from ear to ear. My eyes are like, and I'm like practically dancing. And then I had to do it the next day and I, it, the whole thing all started over again. But then I eventually got so used to it. I said, let's level up. Let's, let's see what it feels like if I start saying I love myself a hundred times. And that felt really awkward, but <laughs> the same, con the same concept. Yeah. So eventually I was just saying, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. And so by the time I was, I don't know how long it took, but eventually I started patting myself in the back saying, you know, you're not bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's a great, that's a great practice that you know, you, people might uh, actually take into consideration. It feels awkward, starts out awkward. Yep. Guess what? It, it works. Oh, it does. Oh, absolutely does. That's why I like the, um, uh, you know, the emotional freedom technique, the tapping. Mm, um, the tapping, so that yeah, works. The EFT. Yeah, so that works very well with, which reminds me, I do, I still have them because I created Archangel Tappings uh, for people. Oh, yeah. what's an Archangel Tapping? That sounds different. What's yeah, it that? is different because you work with the Archangels. So from my Archangel Michael would be courage um, and there will be several tapping points and you just repeat that and it just gets absorbed in your energy, uh, energetic body. But it's like the same with St. Germain. Um, th the one thing, you know, I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. And you repeat that and you keep tapping that. It just, you can just feel it. You can feel the energy because it's all about mm. transformation. Wow. That's powerful. Mm, I gotta try that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta put that in the show notes and uh, make sure everybody uh, uses that. That 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 sounds fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it seems like this this is so uh, important. I mean, you've had so many experiences that yeah. have you know shaped how you started out, and then now you've got all these experiences that you've learned and and grown from. Is this something that you think? everybody can do or are, are, are there things that you think people have to get over first? Like we were talking about clearing the foundation of the house. Yep. You know, uh, so it, it, it really sounds like you got to start in the you know cleaning house internally and say, okay, where do I hurt? Where, what do I need to clean first and do the, the EFT or the, the self love and just get that gunk out first, I guess. Yeah. And sometimes if you don't know how to start inward, you know, it's like declutter your home, get rid of stuff you don't need. Mm. Yeah. And that really helps as well. Really helps change your diet, eat something different. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, once you declutter right. your home and I always like that, I, I mean, I live pretty basic, but I love to declutter my home and um, it just allows you to breathe yeah. and you will think more clearly. And then you can also start within you know, clean up yeah, your house, exactly. your internal house. It's a great sort of stepping stone because it's um, very much of the, the Zen uh, lifestyle where you, if you're living a Zen lifestyle, you're, you're decluttering everything. Yep. You're living in a very clean, sparse environment and you basically take on whatever the environment you're living in. If you're living in a yep. cluttered chaotic <sighs> household, you're going to feel chaotic and cluttered inside. Absolutely. If you live in a sparse, zen, clean, calm household that you've created for yourself, you're going to feel that. So you take on the environment you create in your home, outside of yourself, yes. whatever you create for yourself. So that's perhaps a great way to start. You'll feel it. Then you're like, hey, wait a second. Maybe I can go inside now too. Yes. Hmm. Absolutely. Interesting. Food for thought. I, I, I like that. And here's another one for you. Here's another one. Oh, please do. So when we go through suffering and trauma and we don't heal that and we keep just sitting in that victimhood, what happens? Yeah. It bleeds into our energy field, but it's, 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 we keep cutting that same wound open and yes, it bleeds into our environment, but it also bleeds into the soil of mother earth. Just because Gaia can alchemize the trauma, yeah, we do create, we, we pollute the earth with our toxic energies. We do. I mean, we pollute the earth with, gosh, I mean, so much else, but what, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so it's like, hey, Mother Earth can alchemize the trauma 
So what about me? I should be able to alchemize my trauma. I'm deserving of a better life. I am worthy of that. So never think that you're not worthy. Yeah. Because you mm. are. And believe you, me, um, there is really no need to stay in, in, in the state of mind you are currently in. There's no need to stay in your suffering, but you've got to shift your mindset. And that's really about, again, as you said earlier, taking that first step to understanding yeah. that you are deserving of better. Everyone is deserving of better. It doesn't matter if you make what you call mistakes. I just call them experiences. No, it mm. doesn't. It yeah. really, really doesn't. It's just an experience. That's all. I don't really see experiences good or bad, even though there is evil, evil in the world and evil I split into two words like Eve, which is the feminine aspect and ill means imbalance. I put an extra L imbalance of love and light. It means that we are too much in the masculine, which is too much to 3D, but we need to nurture our spirit, which is the Eve. Um, and so that's just what we're lacking. So when people say, oh, you're bad, you're evil, it's just, oh, actually, you know what? You're just lacking the feminine. You're just lacking nourishing your own spirit, uh, becoming aware of things and of yourself. And you're just very much in balance of love and light. So you just need to rebalance yourself and mm -hmm. feed yourself that love and light by, again, alchemizing your unhealed experiences. It's as mm -hmm. simple as that. And you, you mentioned something about uh, that mindset of lack of self-worth mm. and it dawned on me, you know, sometimes people will joke and they'll say, oh, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. And they'll say it as a joke. Ooh, but, but the mind hears and, it. And the mind hears it. And there's also a subconscious component yeah. about that actually saying, you know what, I'm not worthy, really. I'm, this is a subconscious <laughs> quote that I'm actually manifesting here that's actually bubbling up at the surface yeah. so if you <laughs> go back in subconscious it's really saying that you don't realize it you're like oh i'm just joking no you're not <laughs> oh the mind is like a little eager beaver that's listening it's like eavesdropping on everything that you say oh 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 wait a minute okay mm -hmm. it's like this little little typist in the legal yeah. uh, in the legal room <laughs> Be careful in the courtroom. Yeah, be, be be careful what you say because you are creating everything. As Absolutely. You say. Wow, it's so true. It's like, wait a second, I'm not worthy. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you you're you're talking about uh, you know leveling up, uh, connecting, cleaning a house. What do you find to be some of your biggest challenges as you go through and you, you know, you, you try to level up and you try to you know, balance, you try to clean house and you, you try to, you know, keep on expanding and, and, and raising your potential or achieving your potential? What do you what do you find some of your challenges are as you go through all that? Well, I see my experiences a little differently, but it doesn't mean that they're not hard. It's just that I'm aware of what I'm doing. It's like, hey, you know what? My Achilles heel has always been, I worked like a donkey too many hours because that's how I like to push things away. <laughs> and um, I don't eat properly. It's too, it's, I'm too stressed out. But the difference now when I go through challenging experiences is that I'm aware of it. And I think that mm. is very key. Yeah? Rather than living too much on automatic pilot, it's like, you know what, I need to change my situation. I need to change my circumstances. How can I do that? And whether that means removing someone from your life, that is okay. There is nothing wrong with that. Um, we often stay, and that's, you know, with family, it's in relationships. People often remain because they don't know what's on the other side of that fence. It's the unknown. So people like to remain in the comfort of that discomfort rather than hopping the fence and understanding that life can be beautiful and life can be better, but it's taking that leap of faith and having that courage to do so. Mm -hmm. And we're so pre-programmed um, that it's often very hard for people to move forward with their lives. But trust me, when you hop the fence, life can be very beautiful. Hmm, sounds so what what do you think would be one thing that uh, you know you could tell a listener today that you feel could help them whether it's leveling up or you know anything of the things we were talking about 
Any piece of advice? Uh, anything. You know, what works for me doesn't work for another, but I love meditation as well. Mm. And that really clears my, my head. So besides like decluttering and all the practical stuff that I've spoken of, it's also meditation because it just gives clarity. And it's like, yeah, but I don't have time to meditate really, but you have time to watch TV. You have time to watch Netflix. <laughs> and I also like to go for a run just to clear my head or go to the oh, gym. Good. Or um, a walk if you can't. If walk, you don't want it doesn't run, matter. Biking, it doesn't walk. matter what you do. Do whatever. Walk in the forest. Yep, absolutely. Do whatever agrees with your spirit. But I like to listen to David G because these are like 20-minute meditations. And he's got these things on YouTube about, you know, of uh, – yeah, fear, procrastination, overcoming anxiety, you name it, manifesting. And it's really powerful. And all you need to do is just plug in your headphones and click play. And mm -hmm. the other thing, he talk, he does a lot with the breath with the breath as well. Uh, and that's one of the reasons. Yeah, we 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 shallow breathe. We don't deep breathe. And that's why we walk in puddles in the shallow mm -hmm. waters of ourselves rather than going deep within. Yeah, because when the we, air to go down in yep, the tummy. Yeah. Exactly. And when we do that, ooh, those cells are like, ooh, we're receiving oxygen. Finally. 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 Yeah. And the body starts to work properly. It's like, oh my God. It's like, it's, 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 uh, what do you call it? It's just, it feels exhilarating. And yeah. So what's 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening? Well, one of the things I, I tell people is the uh, the most important thing about meditation is the consistency, not even the duration. So if a person says, I don't even have time, or they think they don't have time, I said, just do five or 10 minutes that's it. and do that a daily. That's, that's all you need. Yep. Maybe later on, you'll, you'll, you'll build up, but just start and, and do it on a daily basis. And it's that consistency. You'll be surprised at how easy it becomes. And one of the things I use, I use uh, Insight Timer. It's the world's best app. It's got like 160,000 ambient tracks and, you know, it's free. You can get a premium version if you want, but it's like, yeah. oh my God, just just use something like that. Insight yeah. Timer is actually probably the, the 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 best because it's 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 all free as opposed to the other apps that aren't. But or or anything. Also, that way you don't have to deal with the YouTube apps. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh God, I don't want to get interrupted by a YouTube ad. But um, you know, that's that would be my advice for somebody who's yeah. in meditation. So yeah, do that and walk or run or take Paint, a salt bath. right do whatever do whatever do do just do something else do something, something different for you yeah something for you that's great well, awesome well this has been uh eye-opening vibrationally raising uh the light language is great i love that so this has been very helpful so i thank you so much for uh for coming on and sharing everything you know uh with the world this has mm -hmm. been great Thank you so, so much for having me, Chris. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And to all the listeners today, thank you so much for uh, listening to another episode of Spirit Societies. I'm uh, so glad you decided to uh, join us. Keep joining us uh, every Wednesday and remember to like and subscribe so you'll see all the rest of the episodes uh, as they drop every Wednesday. So with that, this is uh, Chris sending you love and light, and I will see you next Wednesday. Until then, bye for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Spirits Beside Us. Make sure you head over to the show notes for all the links and information on this week's episode. You can check it out at spiritsbesideus.com. If you love this episode as much as I did, head over to rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Also, if you're looking for a community of spiritual seekers like yourself, make sure you join my Facebook page, Spirits Beside Us Podcast on Facebook. This is Chris signing off, sending you love and light. I can't wait to connect with you again on Wednesday. <laughs>